Hey everyone, welcome to PC Perspective. Today we have a really cool product to show off. Uh, it's in this system right here next to me. It's the GeForce GTX Titan GPU from NVIDIA. This is actually a new super high-end enthusiast graphics card from NVIDIA uh, built off of GK110. We might have, you might have known about that GPU from its supercomputing launch when it went into Tesla machines and that kind of stuff. Uh, this is a, a, as we pointed out earlier, a the first non-numbered video card we can remember having in a long time, and NVIDIA thinks it's something special. Uh, it's going to be expensive, but it's going to be high performance. I think you'll find that a lot of these cards end up in systems like this one. This is a Geekbox rig that they sent us uh, uh, specifically for the Titan review. We have three of those cards in there, uh, as well as overclocked Sandy Bridge E and that kind of stuff. Uh, but we, we can't talk about benchmarks yet. We'll talk about benchmarks in a couple of days. I think it's maybe important the way we start with is a quick refresh of GK110. Even if you've heard about this before, uh, it's, it's always helpful to have a refresh on the specifications of this. So this is a Kepler design, uh, but it is a much larger chip than what we saw in GK104. This has 2,688 CUDA cores, um, single precision, and then it has 896 double precision. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, that is one SMX less than a complete GK110 chip if you are keeping count. So they have one SMX disabled on the silicon. 224 texture units, 48 ROPs. Now the base clock is 836 megahertz. And I know if you pay attention to the graphics card market, that's quite a bit less than what the GTX 680 is at. But since you're seeing an increase from 1500 or so shaders to 2600 or so shaders, uh, you're still definitely gonna have much higher performance. This does have GPU boost. It has a new version of GPU boost. Boost clocks go up to 876. Memory still running at six gigahertz, but maybe more impressive is that this has six gigabytes of memory on it running at six gigahertz. So that's pretty impressive. And the memory bus width has increased from 256 to 384. So you get a 50% boost in that. 288 gigabytes per second of total memory bandwidth. It is a 28 nanometer chip. It is 7.1 billion transistors. Uh, dual slot card still, one eight pin, one six pin. And they're only recommending a 600 watt power supply. So for the performance you get, that's actually pretty good. If we look at the design of the card itself, the, the GTX Titan uh, shares very similar design cues to the GTX 690. Um, the, the cooler looks very much the same. It has a vapor chamber. Uh, it has a, a pretty extended fin stack, advanced fan controller, that kind of stuff. This card does support three-way SLI. Uh, as you can obviously see here, we've got a system that, that is running it. Um, and like I said, six, six gigabytes of memory. So the GTX 690 and the GTX Titan are going to exist at the same time in NVIDIA's product stack. They're, they're going to coexist. One is not, uh, the Titan's not pushing the GTX 690 out. And part of the reason for that is, you know, the multiple GPU configuration uh, that uses GK104 on GTX 690 has different properties and, and benefits than the, the Titan does. And with the six gig frame buffer, you're really targeting super high resolution, multi-display gaming, while NVIDIA maybe will tell you that the GTX 690 is the best card for single monitor gaming, although there are, there are a lot of debates there. Uh, so the card itself looks great. Uh, it's going to be sold by just a handful of vendors, but don't expect it to vary any in terms of design. You're basically looking at the same kind of sticker changes that we saw with the GTX 690. And you, you'll definitely find them in a lot of systems like this. You know, a lot of these high-end systems like Geekbox and, and other guys are going are gonna to sell these out, uh, I think, pretty regularly. Uh, I can't talk about performance benchmarks yet, as we, as we mentioned. Um, one of the things that this cooler was built for, that the chip was designed for, and that the targets was a, a they call world-class acoustics. They wanted to make sure that it's a, a, a very quiet cooling design. And we'll talk about GPU boost now that really focuses on temperature rather than power consumption um, to kind of vary the clock speeds and that kind of stuff as well. But let's go ahead and actually go ahead and jump into the idea of GPU boost too. I'm not going to you know, go into too much detail here because on Thursday, on the actual launch day when we're able to show you benchmarks, Tom Peterson from NVIDIA will be here and we're going to go through a bunch of demos, a bunch of walkthroughs of GPU Boost 2, overclocking, overvolting, all that kind of stuff. The basic idea of GPU Boost 2.0 is that they're using available temperature headroom now instead of just... Uh, power consumption headroom. And the reason they're decided to do this is you can get uh, power, power was being estimated on the GTX 680 and the GTX 600 cards prior to this. 
With temperature, it's something that's directly monitored. So they have the capability to measure it in real time and make these adjustments as they go. This also means that your system temperature, your ambient temperature, how, how efficient your cooling in your case is, is going to matter a little bit more with a card like Titan than it would with a GTX 680. The goal of GPU Boost 2.0 is to prevent a combination of high voltage and high temperature. Um, you may have noticed with the GTX 600 series of cards, they disabled overvolting, and that was because of one of the one of the reasons was because of the way GPU Boost worked, how it interacted with software, and how it could could maybe potentially damage your card if it was enabled. Now GPU Boost 2 changes things by instead of targeting the clock speeds based on power consumption and power draw, essentially, it is now based on temperature. So the default setting on GTX Titan is 80 degrees temperature. So they will, if, if your GPU is cold, if you're just starting up a game, you'll notice that your clocks will be very high. And as that GPU warms up, the clocks will actually come down until the fan starts to ramp up and you find this equilibrium between fan speed, GPU usage, and temperature. And that's adjustable now in uh, the latest versions of applications. We're going to show EVGA Precision X because that's the one that uh, was given to us to demo with originally. Um, this actually, according to NVIDIA, allows you to run at higher clock speeds on average than the previous version of GPU Boost would allow you to do. Um, and when you would go into the whole world of overclocking, which is again supported on Titan more so than it was even on the GTX 680 or the 690, because now you can adjust the voltage, you can move something called the temperature target, which was like, you could use the move the power target before. You can still do that, but now the temperature target says, okay, you know what, I'm comfortable with 90 degrees C on the GPU, let's, let's move that up there and clock speeds will adjust accordingly. And you have a little bit more flexibility with that and you can go in and adjust the fan curves correspondingly as well so that, okay, I want, I want this to be nice and quiet until it gets up to that 90, then go ahead and ramp up the fan and uh, you know, affect the experience in that way. So NVIDIA claims that with GTX Titan, you're gonna get more control. You have the, the capability to have nearly silent operation if that is your goal. If you want to put a GTX Titan into a small form factor system, you can absolutely do that. If you want it to be sitting on your desk next to you, you can absolutely do that. All you do is you maybe adjust that temperature, temperature control down a little bit below 80 if you want it to be a little bit quieter. If you're okay with a little bit more noise, you're wearing headphones, you move that up, you increase the voltages, and uh, you get higher clocks because of it. It was not uncommon for us in our testing to see clocks in the 1100 range uh, for you know an initial starting point and then kind of coming down into the above uh, a gigahertz range with just some modest overclocking adjusting these temperature offsets and that kind of stuff. So a lot more detail on GPU Boost 2.0 on Thursday when Tom Peterson is here. If, if you're watching this video well after the release of Titan, just check on our YouTube channel on PCPer.com where we'll have uh, the, the recording of our meeting with Tom that will give you a lot more details on GPU Boost 2. One more cool feature that NVIDIA is enabling with the GTX Titan graphics card is the idea of display overclocking. It's not a completely new thing, they didn't invent it. It is becoming somewhat more popular with the release of these uh, Korean 27 inch displays, right? The 2560 by 1440 monitors. Some of them are being marketed and sold on eBay as, hey, you can overclock the refresh rate on this. The benefit is, is when you turn on VSync, which a lot of gamers will do, so you have a you know, tear-free kind of gaming experience, you're limited to the refresh rate of your display. If it's 60 hertz, you know, you're never gonna see more than 60 frames at a time. Even if you have a 120 hertz panel, never more than 120. Well, as it turns out, NVIDIA's kind of decided that most displays can go higher than 60 hertz, so they're going to enable their partners like EVGA and ASUS and MSI and whoever on their tools to uh, basically change the information that they give to the monitor. So the monitor, uh, if it has the capability to be overclocked, it will be kind of like um, setting a new resolution on your display. You, you say, okay, I want to push this monitor to 80 hertz, and you hit apply, and if the screen goes black, it will revert back after 10 seconds and you move on. Uh, if it doesn't, if it's acceptable and it works, you hit OK, and now when you enable VSync, you'll be able to run at 80 frames per second. So uh, the potential for pretty drastically changing a gaming experience uh, is, is right there. 
This feature isn't available yet, uh, but I'm hoping within the next week or so we'll be able to get that in and test it out. I'm eager to see where all of the displays in our office, how they react to this overclocking, um, but I'm really eager to give it a shot and, and I commend NVIDIA for offering this type of uh, additional option for gamers. Now, when it comes to GPGPU, as you might imagine, the GK110 GPU on the GTX Titan is really targeted towards that. And in a somewhat unique move for NVIDIA, they, they claim that they are not holding back. They're not going to try to sell this card at an inflated rate um, for you know, uh, GPGPU uses. If you want to buy a GTX Titan for a thousand bucks, mind you, $999, and you want to do GPGPU on it, you can do that, and it's fully unlocked, right? So, but what you have to do is you do have to go into the control panel and enable double precision mode in the control panel because that clocks the GPU down pretty dramatically, and if you were to play a game in that mode, it would be much lower performance. So if you do switch back and forth, you are going to have to go in the control panel to adjust that every once in a while, which is which is kind of a pain. I would like to see Nvidia maybe intelligently enable and disable those modes as necessary. But it's really cool for people who are doing software development. If you're interested in GPGPU, maybe folding at home would be able to take advantage of this as well. And uh, the GTX Titan is going to be probably the best card for that we've seen. The new NVIDIA GeForce GTX Titan is priced at the same level as the GTX 690. It's a $999 MSRP on this card. Yes, it's very expensive. Uh, yes, it will have lower performance than a GTX 690. It will have higher performance than a GTX 680. You'll have to come back and see all of our benchmarks. We're being held back on benchmarks for a couple of more days. Um, so we'll have another video on that. And also be sure to check PCPro.com for our review that will be out on Thursday, showing all the performance comparisons to the 7970, the Ares 2, the GTX 690, the 680s, SLIs, three-way Crossfire and SLI, all that kind of stuff will be included in there. Now the 999 price tag definitely puts it in you know, the, the territory of only the, the most extreme, the most dedicated of PC gamers. If you get your hands on one, it is going to be the best singles GPU solution that we've seen. And if you're gonna buy a system like this, vendors are gonna offer it in this particular way, right? So I mean, we're talking about $3,000 worth of graphics cards alone in this system. Uh, it's definitely gonna be probably the best gaming experience you'll be able to have at a price as well. So be sure you come back uh, on Thursday to watch Tom Peterson. We're gonna have him in studio to interview and talk about the new card, the new version of GPU Boost, overclocking, all that kind of stuff. And on Thursday, we'll have our full review at PCPro.com with all the benchmarks and information you are looking for. Thanks for checking out our video on the GeForce GTX Titan. I'm Ryan Shrout.